Good evening, valued viewers. We heartily welcome you to this media commentary, which we start with the following quote of the former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. When the entire world press was in total agreement a few days ago in the wholesale condemnation of the former Luxembourgian Prime Minister and recently selected EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker, the attentive citizen rubbed his eyes in amazement. Is the press really revealing political intrigues all of a sudden? What happened? Under the governmental chairmanship of Mr. Juncker, the Principality of Luxembourg became the world's second largest investment center right after the USA. This became possible due to a very relaxed tax policy for companies, which allowed the large multinational corporations to shrink their tax loads to less than 1%. This is also called tax avoidance. The beneficial tax rates were enabled in the last five years by negotiations behind closed doors between the former Luxembourgian Premier Juncker and company representatives. And now, all of a sudden, the press discovered 28,000 pages of these highly explosive and secret tax agreements. These Luxembourg leak documents are rightly used as heavy artillery against Mr. Juncker. Are things like these tax agreements, which were already known off the record, suddenly discussed in public to bring the European Commission president into line? Is there a hidden, higher interest to discredit Mr. Juncker right now? This guess is not far from the truth. Behind closed doors, Mr. Juncker, as the European Commission president, is currently involved in other, much more significant, secret negotiations. Compared to these negotiations, the Luxembourgian tax deals are child play. Here we are talking about the TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership with the USA and the corresponding Investor State Dispute Settlement, short ISDS. With ISDS, we're talking about courts of arbitration completely detached from public. In case of a dispute, they're able to reverse the jurisdiction of entire countries in the interest of international corporations overturning and destroying the most elementary interests of European citizens. This is exactly the jurisdiction of the European states Mr. Juncker wanted to preserve. And as European Commission President, he required negotiations, renegotiations for the trade and investment partnership. Mr. Jean-Claude Juncker is cited as saying that he will not accept, and I quote here, that the jurisdiction of the courts in the EU member states is limited by special provisions for investors' complaints. The planned trade and investment partnership is extremely controversial and the critics especially fear the mentioned courts of arbitration. Those are criticized as sort of an untouchable parallel justice. One can expect them to even decide against the interests of entire countries to protect a bunch of investors. It suits the multinationals very well that the press has started keeping tabs on Mr. Juncker. They're very interested in Mr. Juncker learning his lesson, changing his opinion, and permitting the claimed independent arbitration boards after all. This demonstrates only one thing. If it's a matter of future profits, the multinational corporations are anything but squeamish. But throw an old companion like Mr. Juncker to the wolves if he comes in the way of international interests. It does not seem to count anymore that he formally provided these very clients with extremely beneficial tax deals in Luxembourg. We will stay tuned to this case for you and make an effort to look behind the scenes to show you the real circumstances. Join us soon again on Klagemar TV to see what is being decided in this matter. And please, don't forget to share this information with others.